Oh. Some want to read number two to me. Or you can just tell me what information is found in number two. Yes, ma'am. Four fifths and one half. Four fifths? No, not four fifths. Four tenths? No? Yeah, four and five. Four decimal five. Four with a decimal five. Five is in the tenths place. Five is in the tenths place, you're right. But anything on the left of a decimal is considered a what kind of number? A whole number. That's like saying four dollars and fifty cents. This is not four fifths. Four fifths would look like this. If I turn four fifths into a decimal, okay, I will first have to turn it to a percentage, okay? I goes into one hundred twenty times. When I get to the bottom, I get to the top, okay? And then written as a percent, it would look like this. And we know to turn a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal space over twice. So this is what four fifths would look like as a decimal. Takes 20, like if you had $20 bills, okay? It takes five of those $20 bills to make 100. So if I only have four $20 bills, I have how much money? 80, okay? So that's four fifths. Four fifths is totally different, but when we say four with the decimal, then five, that is saying four and five tenths. So not four fifths, four and five tenths. Four dollars and fifty cents, okay? All right, so we have four and five tenths. What else do we have? What was the next thing you said we had? One half, One half. okay? Four and five tenths. Mile, half of a mile. Then what was the last one, Carlos? One and five tenths. One and five tenths. When you're reading that decimal, you say and. One and five tenths. Does that make sense? Okay. One and five tenths. Okay. All right. So now what do I do with these three values? What is the first thing I need to do with these three values? Solve first two. Okay, I could solve the first two, but essentially what am I gonna do with all three of the values together? I'm gonna add them up, okay? What do I notice about the types of numbers that I see up here? Ezekiel, what types of numbers do I see up here? What two forms do I see? Fractions and decimals. Fractions and decimals. So I either need to turn everything to fractions or I need to turn everything to what? Decimals. decimals. But I already have two of my numbers that are decimals already. So what am I going to do with that fraction? Turn it to a decimal. And one half written as a decimal is what? One and two tenths. No. Because one, oh, one and two tenths would look like that. And then if I turn this to a decimal. like the first one. Yeah, like that. So one half. Give, uh, let's see. Okay. I want to turn it to a decimal, but first I have to turn it to a fraction, then to a percent. How many times? Can, what do I do to turn two to 100? Multiply or divide it? Times 50. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Okay. And that written as a decimal looks like that. Okay. I can't just take the fraction bar out and stick a decimal where that fraction bar was. I have to actually convert it, okay? Half of a dollar is not a dollar and 20 cents. It's not half of a dollar. Half of a dollar is how much? 50 cents, okay? Half of a dollar is 50 cents. So, that, oh wow, that's nice, okay? I'm gonna turn that to a decimal, okay? And then once everything is a decimal, what do I do? Add it. Add it, okay? okay? Six and five tenths of a mile is what she ran total from last week, yesterday, and today. Now, I want to know how many yards six and five tenths miles is. So I would need to do what? So I know I can set up a proportion. Okay. 
I know that one mile is 1,760 yards. If I look at my conversion chart or my star chart, I can see that one mile is equal to 1,760 yards, right? So how do I get from one to 1,760? One times, one times 1,760. And what I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So all I would need to do is multiply on 1,760. So let's go ahead and do that. Anytime I'm multiplying with decimals, my first step is to do what? I need to turn to a whole number. Before I can turn it to a whole number, I have to do what? Count the digits behind the decimal. And in this case, we have how many? One. So one DTD or one behind the decimal. And then I can multiply that they're whole numbers instead of using zero, 30, 38. Six times zero is zero. Six times six is thirty-six. Drop six, carry the three. All right, six times seven is forty-two. Plus three is forty-five. Drop the five, carry the four. Six times one is six. Plus four is ten. Now I need to add zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Eight plus six is fourteen. Drop the four, carry the one. One plus eight is nine. Plus five is fourteen. Okay. Drop the four carry the one. One plus zero is one, and this has nothing, so I bring it down. All right. Okay. Now, how many digits do we say were behind the decimal? One. Okay. Take it for one digit behind the decimal. So that leaves me one, two, three. Okay. 11,440 yards. Should have been my answer. That is a lot of yards. And that's a lot of miles for her to have been running because guess what? Wouldn't have been Miss Wells at all. Because I would have got to half of mine. I'd be like, okay, somebody, somebody come pick me up. Uh, call me an Uber. Uber, hey Siri. Uh, no, not for real, Siri. Hey Siri, call me an uh, Uber. Because I'm tired, okay? Miss Wells is not a, a workout person. As thin as I am, I'm super out of shape. Like, uh uh. Nope. Don't ask me to work out, don't ask me to run, none of that stuff, okay? All right, let's move it right along. So we didn't watch the video for capacity yesterday, so we're gonna watch the video for capacity. As soon as it decides to wanna open. Hey guys, what's up? So I'm not you, girl. Right and they cover all the science. Welcome back with Mr. Jeff. Okay, let's have a quick discussion. So you're going to be asked several times to make realistic choices or realistic decisions or realistic predictions based on specific units of measurement. Okay, so let's pretend that I've been talking all day, I've been teaching all day, and I'm like, boy, I'm so thirsty, my throat is so dry, I really need something to drink, like for real, for real, for real, okay? And so I task Talia with going to get me something to drink. So the smallest unit of measurement for customary liquid or capacity is fluid ounces, and then you have cups, and then you have pints, and then you have quarts, and then you have gallons. Anybody ever see like a gallon of milk? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like a gallon of milk, then you have, um, within that gallon, you have four quarts. Okay, so if you split that gallon up by four, you have a quart. Then um, in each quart, you have two pints. In each pint, you have two cups, okay? And in each cup, you have eight fluid ounces. So this bottle of water right here, okay? This bottle of water, if it were full, okay, it would be worth... 16 and 9 tenths ounces of fluid, okay, of, of, or of water, right? So if I ask Talia to bring me something to drink, and I told you that there are 8 ounces per cup, so this bottle is like 2 cups of water, right? If I ask Talia to bring me something to drink, do you think it would make sense for her to bring me 
an ounce of water. Here's about one ounce of water. I'm like, Talia, I'm dying of thirst. Before I pass out, bring me something to drink. Don't you think it'd be like really rude and like really mean of her to just bring me this little ounce of water and be like, here you go, Miss Drink up. Okay. Like, so rude, right? You wouldn't do that to me, would you? No. What what do you think she would bring me? A gallon. A gallon? Oh so again, let me tell you what would happen if Talia brought me a gallon of water, unless I only had 10 minutes to drink that gallon of water. What do you think I would be doing in the next 10 minutes? Excuse me, I need a hall pass because, yeah, no. Okay. What is the logical amount that she would bring me? About two, about two cups, about a bottle of water, right? Yeah. And that should that should do me all right, okay? Until I have a lunch break where I can go use the P O T T Y. Yeah, like I mean, this will get me over until lunchtime. Like if I'm dying of thirst right now, this this will get me over. Like she brings me a gallon of water and be like, "Go ahead and do your assignment. Don't get out the class. I gotta go." Okay, all right. So, um, let's say, let's see, let's say I wanted to fill up my bathtub. I'm gonna get my baby a bath, and I wanna fill up my bathtub. And I say, um, Gerilyn, bring me a container that I can like scoop water uh, to fill up this bathtub, okay? Cause let's say I wanna be bougie, and I don't want to use the tap water, and I wanna use some other fancy kind of water from Antarctica or somewhere, and they have this big old container, but I need to take a smaller container to fill up my tub. What do you think? Do you think it would make sense for her to bring me this water bottle and be like, here you go, Miss Wells. No, Happy no. trail. Because I'd be up there like. <clears throat> so how what 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 size container do you think she should bring? A gallon. Okay, all right. Um, let's see. All right, let's say I wanted to go eat some ice cream somewhere, right? Okay. I wanted to go eat some ice cream somewhere. And they're like, okay, what size do you want? Okay, we have all sorts of sizes of containers. Um, some of you want to take take it home or whatever have you. And let's let me ask you this trick question. Um, I'm getting the ice cream for a party. Okay. Oh. Ah. Yeah, you like to switch up? Okay, I'm getting the ice cream for a party. So do I? Do you think I would say, mm, give me two cups? No. Because then Kiana is going to come over to the party and be like, really? So we only get a spoonful of ice cream because you wanted to just get two cups worth of ice cream? I'm be like, girl, but I have to get you nothing wrong. Ungrateful. Okay. All right. What what um measurement should I use? What unit of measurement should gallons. I use? Uh, gallons. I probably uh, use gallons. Okay. Because, I mean, I know Raul will give me complete attitude if he only got a scoop or, or a tablespoon of ice cream and that was it. Okay, attitude, you right? You wouldn't give me attitude? Yes, you You're so kind, okay? Because <laughs> I know Promise will give me so much attitude, okay? Her and Jacqueline and Ezekiel, okay? <laughs> All right, all right, so let's get into the video. He's gonna talk about conversions, and I just want you to keep that in your mind as we go through. In this video, I'm going to cover how to convert customary. I'm gonna skip him just a little bit because he's ready to go. Practice conversion that works with groups that work well. Now, over in the blank area on the right side of your screen, can you create um, another because of how? Oh, oh sir, come on. I was suggesting you draw this out. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. So, I know I said I was gonna play a video. JK, JK, I'm gonna tell you a story first. Because I forgot he was gonna do So, there was a man named the Gallon King. In the Gallon King, in his in his kingdom, there were four other queens. Okay, all right, and each queen had two princesses, and each princess had two cats, and each of the princesses' cats had eight lives. Okay, the cats had eight lives because they all decided to go to a super uh, skydiving cat party, and all of them fell off and lost a life. You know they say cats have nine lives. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So all of them each fell off and they all lost a life and they were like, you know what, bump this, we're not doing this no more because I want to keep the rest of my lives, okay? So they all had eight lives, okay? So again, Gallon King had four queens. Each queen had two princesses. Each princess had two cats and each cat had eight lives, okay? 
Watch e. this. And that G represents That's one the gallon. The end. So one gallon here. Next, we're going to draw four cubes. That represents four, four queens quarts or four quarts in a gallon. Oh. oh. I the fill. I actually learned that story last class year. <laughs> that gallon. Yours is probably going to be neater than mine. So next, in each quart, we need two pints. Two princesses. So two pints equals one quart. No, oh, why my story like that? Like it's just so boring. And eight pints so fills rude. one gallon. Or All right, four. so in that in the big gallon king's kingdom, how many princes were there total? What the? Eight, eight princesses within the Gallon King's kingdom, don't you see? No. Eight. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Eight princesses. No, you king. must count the circle that it was inside. In total. The, the quarters in the pints in total. I'm not asking you about quarters. I'm asking you about pints. But you said in total. Yeah. How, how, how many pints? How many peas do you see in that sheet? You didn't say peas. You know what I mean? You said, said how many, many princesses? Gallon. How many is in the gallon? You said that was word. How many princesses are in the gallon king's kingdom? Meaning, how many pints are there in a gallon? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You shouldn't say that. You just flipping it around. You didn't say that. I said that. Lord have mercy. Okay. How many quarts are there in a gallon? Eight. Four. 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 A measuring cup, one one cup, and how many of those it would take to fill a gallon? So think of a gallon of milk. We would need sixteen cups to fill a gallon. Now, lastly, we have eight fluid ounces in one cup. He's not going to write that in because his writing is too small. I did it. If you want to write your big G on like a big piece of paper or a regular size piece of paper to take up the whole space. You can do that, and then you can leave enough space to just write the number eight inside of each little C, and then you'll know that you have eight ounces per cup. So with that being said, let's do some practice real quick. I have two gallons, meaning I have two of these Gs, and I want to know how many pints I have. So in one of these Gs, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in two of the G's, how many pints or P's would I have? 16, okay. Um, six quarts. So I had one, two, three, four, and then two more. I want to know how many pints I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I have nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, good job. All right, three gallons. How many quarts? I have four quarts per gallon. That's a unit rate. Four quart or uh, four quarts per gallon. So if I have three gallons, how many quarts do I have? Twelve. Okay. Y'all see how this works? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's try to work backwards now. Now I have twenty-four fluid ounces. How many cups? I have one cup or no eight fluid ounces per cup. So how many cups would I have if I had twenty-four fluid ounces? Three. What did you do to get three? Twenty-four divided by three would give us eight. Remember yesterday how I said when I'm moving from a smaller unit to a larger unit of measurement, I divide. Okay. Did you see how we move from the larger unit to the smaller and we multiply? For this one, we did two times um eight to get sixteen. Okay. Then we did six times. What do we say? 
eight. No, we did six times two. Yeah, we did six times two to get 12, okay? All right, so we move from the larger to smaller. We multiply large, uh, large to smaller. We multiply smaller to large. We divide, okay? All right, moving on, because all he's going to do is continue running his mouth and solving these problems, and I think you could better use your time working on the next thing. So you have your reference sheet yet again. You have the customary study guide yet again. How many people looked at this and saw it helpful? Yeah. It tells you exactly when to multiply and when to divide and what to multiply and what to divide by depending on where you're trying to go. Okay? So make sure you utilize that. Okay? Oh, yeah. All right. Get over that. All right. So now you should be at the customary conversion problem. No, you should be. No, you know what? Mine is different. I changed yours. This is where you should be. Gallery man activity. Yeah. Okay. What you're going to do on the gallery man activity is you're going to click and drag the pieces to fill the gallery man. And then you can look to see. How much of each thing are in each gallon, are in a gallon? Then, of course, you'll go to the second slide. You'll answer those five quick questions using the gallon man to help you answer those questions or what we just did or your star reference sheet, whatever works for you, or the customary study guide, whatever works for you. And you'll answer those five questions. And then you'll come to this activity, which is the next thing, the customary conversion problem. On the customary conversion problems, all you're doing is converting, okay? It's going to ask you, it's going to tell you you have so many of something, and then it's going to ask you for that same amount in a different form, okay? So you have um, problems for length. You have problems for weight. And you have problems for capacity, okay? Now I know that these are a lot of problems, right? So... I'm going to sell it to you from my mouth to your ears. I'm not requiring this to be turned in completely today. When are you requiring it to be done, Ms. Wells? No later than tomorrow. End of the day tomorrow. So 11.59 p.m. tomorrow. Well, after you get out of school tomorrow, make sure you have this turned in. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's not a question I'm asking about right now. I'm asking about the work. No other questions? All right, hop to it. Okay, and if you guys are needing any assistance, you can um, type it into the, the comments box or you can go ahead and go if you are good to go. Okay. I will be here until 11.06 to answer any questions that you have. In the meantime, I will be turning off my mic and my camera.